you touched on it actually in terms of lowering carbohydrates um and obviously that leads to ketosis which has kind of died down a bit like the keto diet but if you can talk about what you recommend in terms of consuming carbohydrates for sahur and um, what some optimized meal plans are based on your experience yeah so so it takes a couple of days actually to get into like full-on ketosis but your body does start to develop the metabolic flexibility start using more fat for fuel right and i don't necessarily advocate for getting into a completely ketogenic state because then if you eat carbs iftar i mean you know your body just goes through these weird cycles right uh and you'll feel possibly a little bit off but um but ketosis can work for some people uh there are actually some people who completely swear by ketosis right uh, I don't think I've seen any Muslims who swear by ketosis though, because why our families all love eating carbs. So it's kind of hard to go keto as a Muslim, but actually, no, I, I know some Muslims who are very into keto, but, uh, most Muslims I know who are very fit understand that carbs are a great fuel source and it's a great way to make things sustainable. So, um, so yeah, for, for Savor, you know, the one source of carbs that I would be okay with having for Savor would be actually, there's a couple. There's probably three carb sources uh, that I would personally consider consuming for support that I've successfully used for support in the past, which are oatmeal, because it's probably one of the longest lasting, you know, carbs that you can eat, like it'll keep your stomach full for, for, for a pretty long time. I mean, you'll still get hungrier than on like some healthy fats because fats, you know, take a lot longer to digest, but at least it's long lasting and it will keep your blood sugar levels pretty stable. And it'll also improve how your body processes blood sugar later in the day. Um, for those who, you know, have no digestive issues with oatmeal and I typically recommend gluten-free oatmeal just so you don't get like the gluten, you know, potential, uh, digestive issues. Now, the other one would be potatoes now, or you could do potato or sweet potato, whichever you prefer, prefer the taste of. And potatoes are great because they have a lot of vitamin C, a lot of potassium. You can actually eat a very large quantity of them and they're very satiating and it doesn't actually add up to that many calories, surprisingly, mm. as long as they're not deep fried, they gotta be air fried with no oil. If you add oil, they soak up oil really nicely and you deep fry them and all of a sudden you've like quadrupled the calories. So then it ruins the purpose, right? Especially if it's unhealthy, like vegetable oil or something. Then the other thing, the other, the third carb would be like, like some low sugar Greek yogurt, right? That's actually a very good support for people who don't get digestion issues from dairy because Greek yogurt, the primary protein source inside of Greek yogurt is casein, which is one of the slowest digesting proteins. So it will last you for a very long time. Some people do notice though, that from consuming casein, it makes them pee a lot. And this is a very small percentage of people, but I did have a client who we were trying to have him do casein at night, like in the form of yogurt. And he just found that no matter whether it was a casein shake, whether it was even just yogurt, he, he would have to pee all night long if he consumed casein before bed, which obviously wasn't optimal because that's messing with the sleep quality. And it's not optimal for a fast because if you're dehydrating yourself of all the water, which is also why I don't advocate, you know, coffee with Sahur, I would recommend green tea instead if you need something for caffeine with your Sahur. So that being said, though, my typical Sahur does not have any carbs. So I'll usually for Sahur do about four to six eggs and I'll do two scoops of protein and then I'll do one to two low or zero sugar Chobani Greek yogurts at zero percent. Right. And so that comes out to let's say we do five eggs. Right. That's about so 300 plus 250 from the protein. So that's 550 plus, you know, 120 from two yogurts is uh, 670 calories, which is like pretty low calorie compared to like my total intake, you know, it's about 30% of my daily intake. So it's, it's pretty optimized, but what's the quality of those foods is now I'm doing these nice pasteurized eggs that have omega threes in them. So this is going to give my body a long lasting fuel source. And then when my body runs out of the fuel from the food I ate, which 670 calories, isn't that much to where it'll run out pretty quick, probably by noon, my body switches into fat burning mode. because my body's already been using those fats for energy from the eggs. So now my body says, okay, cool you know, body fat. And the cool thing with fasting is a lot of studies have shown that fasting actually helps you burn more visceral fat, which is the fat that is most, you know, detrimental to your cardiovascular health and most commonly associated with atherosclerosis, aka the hardening of the blood vessels, or sorry, the, uh, the clogging of the blood vessels. So it's very beneficial for inshallah preventing heart attacks. And of course, you know, everything is qadr Allah, but of course, what was your qadr to be somebody who just ate junk food and had a heart attack at 40 or somebody who ate really clean and maybe you died of something else when you were 40 or 60 or whatever. But, you know, uh, a lot of people try to blame qadr for their lack of taking action. Mm. But the thing is, you know, if, if that was a less qadr for you, that you were just some mediocre, weak person, uh, you know, I, I think that we all have accountability on ourselves because Allah is going to ask us on the day of judgment. Why did you not? Why did you not pray? Or why did you not do this? Or why did you not fast? Why did you not take care of the body? Why did you not be the best person you could be for your family? So there is accountability on us to make the right decisions. So again, you know, whenever I talk about living longer, people are like, oh, well, when you die, it's qadr. Yes, it's qadr. But what was the means by which Allah's will came to be? Was your qadr that you got in a car crash at age 25? Was your qadr that she died of a heart attack when you're 40 because you were overweight? Or was it that she died of natural cause when you were 70? 
or of a car crash when you're 45. Again, we don't know, you know, but that's why we always got to live every day and be our best every single day because we never know when we can die. So do the best you can on this earth to do as many good deeds. And again, serve other people, those people around you who have a right on you, your family, your employees, your clients, your, your bosses, if you have a job, you know, your, your coworkers, fulfill the rights of those people for the sake of a lot, it becomes an act of very bad. So that's what I would encourage everybody to take as much action as you can. You know, Allah SWT tells us to follow up every good deed with another good deed, every productive action with another productive action. And so I tried my best to live my life by those principles and not be lazy and not have downtime, except as it is required to recharge my energy levels after I've taken a lot of action. So I, I call it recovery, not rest. Okay. Rest is a form of recovery, but why am I resting? For the purpose of recovery, not for the purpose of being lazy.